Hello everybody, welcome back to the Epic Flight Academy. Hey, if we were gonna take off on a cross country, we would want to be able to measure the direction that we're gonna take on this flight. Now, if I was gonna go from beautiful New Smyrna Beach, Florida, to historic Charleston, South Carolina, and I said to myself, eh, I'm just gonna head off in a northerly direction because I know South Carolina's up there north somewhere, and I end up generally maybe northeast, uh, could be northwest. And you know what? I might never make it to Charleston, South Carolina, unless I take more care and measure my direction accurately. That's what we want to talk about today. This is the Private Pilot Ground School. My name is Mike Thompson, and to be successful, in our measurement of direction, or with this course entirely, we want to be sure to, number one, study this content in Epic's online course and all of its references. Number two, look at these videos in parallel to that content. And number three, it's very important that we work closely with our flight instructor to help us understand this concept in detail. So, remember in an earlier video, we talked about some of the tools for flight planning? Well, we're going to take our plotter and we're going to lay it down on our sectional chart. And your flight instructor is going to work with you on this. And we are going to measure a true course from New Smyrna Beach, Florida to Charleston, South Carolina by referencing the lines of longitude. Now, these lines of longitude are oriented toward true north. True north is the point where the axis of rotation of planet Earth theoretically comes through the north and south side of the planet. Now, I mention that because that's not the same as magnetic north. Magnetic north and south are the points where the Earth's magnetic flux lines enter the planet at magnetic north and magnetic south. Now, in navigation, we use both true course and magnetic course. So, when we measure our direction using our plotter from New Smyrna Beach to Charleston, we are starting with the lines of longitude and our true course. Now, we need to convert that to a magnetic course. Why is that? Because currently, aviation navigation systems are based on magnetic north. Remember, we talked earlier about VORs. They're oriented to magnetic north. If you think back early in, earlier in the course, how are runways numbered? Well, they're numbered to the nearest 10 degrees. Magnetic, that's right. So we orient ourselves in navigation magnetically. Now, if I fly a true course and a magnetic course, I may or may not be on course. What do I mean by that? If I am flying down the line that goes from true north right through magnetic north and on down, and there's zero difference between magnetic and true north, well, then I'm not going to get lost. Then I'll be right on course. But if I am slightly east or west of that line, I'm going to have what pilots call variation. Now, variation will get greater the further east and further west I go. There are some nice graphics in your materials that show you this. Also, you'll find a good picture of it in the pilot's handbook of aeronautical knowledge. In this graphic, you can see an example of isogonic lines, both east and west. And notice this kind of 
uh, pinkish orange colored one, that shows zero variation. That is the agonic line. These lines of variation are depicted on your sectional chart by dashed magenta lines. And you can see an example here. The large arrow is pointing to 15 degrees west. That's variation. The second correction we have to make in the measurement of direction is deviation. Now, uh, oh, there he goes. Did everybody see that? Remember when we talked about the compass and we talked about deviation? We had this little deviant over here. Is that? Oh, no, get out of here. That's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is the fact that the magnetic compass in our aircraft may deviate from accuracy with the world's or the, the planet's flux lines because of little magnetic fields that are generated inside my airplane, like the alternator and or the radios and or the airframe itself may cause that compass to deviate slightly. That's what we're talking about. <clears throat> now, excuse me. In order to plan for that, we need to know how much deviation we're dealing with. Well, luckily, our airframe mechanics have figured that out for us and have laid it out on a little deviation card. And you can see an example of that card right here. This card will be mounted somewhere very close to or on your magnetic compass. So we need to correct for variation. We need to correct for deviation. And that's just about it, right? Uh, wrong. There is one more thing, and it's very important. We must correct for, and that is, guess what? You got it, wind. Pilots are always dealing with wind on the surface, at altitude, up, down, all around, wherever we go, we have to deal with the wind. As pilots, we are wind conscious beings. In our cross country, we are going to uh, build in what we call a wind correction angle or a crab angle. Now, notice in this graphic, it shows my aircraft on a course, a desired course from west to east. Now, I laid that course out with my plotter. I converted it to magnetic for, uh, for variation. I corrected it for deviation using my compass card. And now, notice the blue arrow shows I've got a wind from the north. And I will drift to the south of my easterly course unless I put in a wind correction angle. So that is an overview on the measurement of direction and the three things it is important that we account for. What are those three things again? I'll give you a second. If you said variation, deviation, and wind correction, you're correct. Well, folks, that's a little bit about the measurement of direction. We'll see you next time.